turn that off, please? No. Anyway, I've banned you from playing on that. Now, where'd you find it? Where you hid it. And you haven't finished your breakfast. So what? So what? We should be halfway to school by now. And you haven't put your shoes on. Sai. Do you want to go to school in your socks? Yeah. Sai. I don't want to go to school. I want to play on this. Yeah, well, I've banned you from playing on that. Now, will you please get your shoes on and eat your breakfast? Will you do something for me, please? Look, I don't want to shout, OK? That's all you do. All I do is shout. Constantly. Just put your shoes on, please. Si, can you please put your shoes on? Make me, loser. Right. I'm going to wait for you outside. Sonita's still in the shower, so don't go in. Oh, there's a lock, you know. Oh, she's still in a bit of a state. If Tina had a row with Tommy, would you take her in? I mean, what are we? A doss house? She was upset. She needed someone to talk to. Oh, tell her to call the Samaritans. <sighs> I couldn't get a word in edgeways. I was virtually falling asleep in front of her, and she still didn't stop. It's gone one by the time I got to sleep. So what did she say? Oh, much the same. Don't think she'll go back with Dev, though. I tell you what, I'm glad it's them going through this and not us. Yeah, she should give them a chance. I thought you didn't like Dev. Well, I'm thinking of the kids. Oh, you can be quite sweet sometimes, can't you? Hey, why don't you speak to her? I'm sure she'd like a man's point of view. Mm. Don't look like an agony, Anne. Oh, go on, I think she'd appreciate it. Oh, I can't believe the time I've missed the kids. Oh, yeah, it's nine o'clock. They'll be at school by now. I tell you what, sit down, I'll make a fresh pot. Carl, put the paper down, be polite. I'm so sorry last night was a complete and utter nightmare. Well, what happened? Well, I tried to get out of the house, I promise you. But we can't talk now, she'll hear us. Dev's on to me. What? I should just kill her with the air, Jack. Come here, come here. What are all these letters in your bag? Half term homework. What do you mean, half term homework? You've just had half term. Have you not done this? No. Now, what's this? What's this? Uh, dinner money due back first day after. And this and this. Why haven't you told me about these? Well, we usually does it. All right, so where's my check? But well, what's the time? Is that the time? Listen, we're late already. Where's your sister? Asha! Where is mum? She's gone to the dentist, honey. Is it that? Yes, yeah, she's gone to the dentist, honey. She had an early appointment, all right? Mum's perfume fell off the shelf. What do you mean? What shelf? What perfume? Three bottles, bro. Right, now you come here and you tell me you're joking. Come on. She shot up with the air dryer. No, I didn't. They fell. Oh. You killed Bob's perfume. Shut up. No, I didn't. Is that Bob? Is she back from the dentist? I'm telling her. No, you're not. Wait, wait. Wait I'm telling her. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Open the shop's not open. No, you're not. Jason, it's Maria. Can you give me a car back when you get this, please? I'm having a nightmare. You're right. Oh. I get halfway to nursery and it remembers it's a teddy bear's picnic. Oh, wow. So I went back to the flat to get his teddy and then the key snapped in the lock. Now we're late and Kirk's already gone to work and Mrs Kenworthy's sat in the salon as we speak waiting for a call to go on. Right, well, you go see to her because the only thing that matters right now is Mrs Kenworthy's colour. What's she having? Natural ash, probably, but I was thinking of trying her with something more... What are you asking me that for? <laughs> I'm trying to make you smile. Look, I'll take this little soldier to nursery and I'll keep calling Jason for you. I presume you want the locks changing. Will it cost me a fortune? I don't know, I'll ask him. And what about his teddy? But we'll grab one on the way. Oh, Marcus, give me this. I should build a statue of you and put it up in the precinct. Nah, I'd only end up with a traffic cone on me. <laughs> Thank you a million Quick, times. Mrs. Kenworthy. Go in. Come on, you. Now then, Simon. Mrs. Armitage tells me you were uh, crying in assembly. Has something upset you? Is there anything you're worried about? Something at school? Or at home, maybe? I remember when I was your age. <laughs> How old are you? Eight. Eight years old, what a fantastic age to be. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a secret, Simon. When I was eight years old, I couldn't tell the time. Can you tell the time? Easy, it's half past ten. Well, I wasn't as clever as you were. <laughs> nope, I couldn't get the hang of it. Couldn't get the hang of it at all. <laughs> oh, the mere sight of a clock face has sent shivers down my spine. However much they told me about the big hand and the little hand, I just went annoyed. Then one day we had a test. 
I could hardly bring myself to get out of bed. And do you know what my mother said to me? Simon? Simon Barlow? Where are you? You all right, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I couldn't be uh, better, thank you. You just look a bit... Yeah, well, you know, I was rushing to get the kids to uh, school this morning. You know how that goes. Yeah. Only I didn't even have time to fix my hair. <laughs> uh, but Sunita, she's just, uh, she's just busy just doing something else, you know? Yeah, I do know. Yeah, of course. I didn't hear anything, though, or cry, but her and Stella were talking quite late last night. Yeah. They were just, uh, talking, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, that's 261, please. Right. But she'll be back later. It's all good. It's all good. Great. Thank you. That's good. Gary, how goes it, man? Badly, man. Counting down the hours till mum gets back. I'm looking after our fair. Oh, right. Shocks her system. Why do people do it, eh? Uh, practice. Trial and error. <laughs> Lack of choice. I thought it was hard enough getting myself out of bed in the morning. Well, we are background. I'm surprised to hear that. Trust me, Afghanistan was a stroll in the park compared to a weekend with our fair. <laughs> My negotiation skills are shot. Oh, yeah, I know that feeling, too. See ya. See ya. All right. Right, Dave. Yeah, good. Good. It couldn't be improved on. Glad to hear it. Uh, look, is Simon all right? Yeah, why? I saw Peter pushing him into a car. It all looked a bit fraught. Oh, first day back. <laughs> yeah, what do I know? Yeah, you should have seen mine this morning. It's like, oh, she had, she had havoc with her hair dry, smashed three bottles of perfume to her uh, smithereens. Yeah, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> why don't you take the day off? I'd rather work. It takes my mind off it. Have a bath. Get your nails done. I've just had a shower. I'll still pay you. Honestly, I'm fine. But don't say I didn't offer. Either are you up yet? You found the money. How? The kids were playing shop. Anyway, it doesn't matter how. Why weren't you more careful? Carl, this is for the best. How is it for the best? Oh, for a minute I thought she was still in bed. Either it has been known. I heard that. We've got a party of 13 during at lunchtime. Is that an omen or what? Yeah, it feels like that kind of a day. Hmm. Morning. Hey, yeah, morning. So, is it Pontefract you're interested in, or are you going to have a flutter on the big match? Hmm? We're concerned about Simon. Oh. And I've never been interested in football, as you well know. But you are, however, interested in the ongoing disaster that I like to call my life, aren't you? Well, I have heard about Amy's piggy bank. Hmm. Boys will be boys. We miss him. I bet. And we can't help thinking that his behaviour is a direct result of all this acrimony. You should be a psychologist. He does. No, no, you should. Boy embarks on a bit of petty theft and you put it down to the recent breakup of his parents' marriage. The court cases and the murder charges and the custody battles. Dad, you're quite brilliant. You gonna answer that? No. I'm really enjoying this conversation way too much. Might be something important. Listen, when are you going to stop trying to give me advice on every single aspect of my existence? My job? You retired. You're still my son. I'm 47 years old. I am a very big boy. Peter, you've got a lot on your plate. Simon is very vulnerable right now, and we want to be there for him. What, because I'm not? Is that what you're saying? Did I say that? No, you didn't, but you implied that. Oh, impossible. So Jason says he can replace the cylinder and do the whole lot for 25 quid. Oh, brilliant. Tell him yes. No, all right, darling. Look, you just take it easy. And keep on inhaling that arbor soil. Don't worry. I'll phone Nick for you, yeah. All right, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh. Why can't he ring Nick himself? Oh, How much do I owe you for that, Teddy? It was eight quid, and it's my treat. Mm. Tomorrow night, I am taking you for a drink. Yeah, it's a date. I'll tell Jason to drop off the keys. Thank you. My hero. Shut up, David. But why not? Because I don't trust you, Dad. Because last time you leased him out to Leanne. I didn't lease you him. You did lease him out. We let him spend time with a very important person in his life because you're too stubborn to. I decide who he sees me. What he needs now is a bit of love. I love him plenty. All right, then stop using him like some sort of emotional commodity. Emotional commodity? That's ridiculous. Even for you, that is ridiculous. Look, I bought him a book last week, a book about the weather, and I'm desperate to give it to him. Spoken to the school and they phoned you. No, uh, nobody's phoned me. Your away. phone did ring and they you did They got hold of me at work. It's Simon. He's gone missing. <laughs> Simon Bainer. 
Yeah, he had a pint of mild and then he left. Sunita, have you seen him? In here. Why, yeah. what's happened? Oh, Leanne, please tell me he's with you, please. Who? Simon. Well, it's Monday, he's at school. No, the school phoned, he's disappeared. How? Well, he, he got upset in assembly. I, look, I don't know. It was one minute he's in Mr. Packham's office, the next minute he's run away. Uh, so I had to sign him in, uh, late this morning, so I suppose they'll get a mark against him on the register, which is, like, terrible, really, isn't it? I mean, there should be, should be a mark against the parents. Are we sports with today? No. Um, listen, guess how much, uh, the dinner money is? Go on, for half, uh, half a turn, just go on, have a guess. Why exactly did she say? She lied. She, uh, she wriggled and she evaded and she lied. Well, I mean, all this money in a cupboard. She said she was going to see a friend. Yeah, Lara. And it's fictional. Because she was meeting a man. What, you think I was, like, born yesterday? Has she said anything to you? About what? About anything. And about the money, about the man, about me. Look, I think that you need to stay strong, OK? <laughs> you need to work a bit harder because, Dev, I think you and Sunita are perfect <laughs> for each other. Sophie, please, please Look, don't insult me. She's obviously going through some kind of crisis, yeah? She needs you right now, Dev. And this is the way she shows it. I watch my mum and dad split up. Yeah, the twins. The twins are so young, Dev. You owe it to them to try just that bit harder. No. Listen, I am not at fault here. Dev! He's both of you. Look, God made family for a reason, yeah? No matter how bad things are, there is always going to be a way. You need to fight for her. You need to show her that you love her. Because women love stuff like that. But that second one you give up, what does that say? That says you're not bothered, Devin. You are, aren't you? I've never been so bothered in my life. I'm on a picture you want to make him feel before you see Sensei. He wants to be with me. Leanne, I'm going to be with him. Is this really the right time for you to be a Well, team. clearly he's not in the right environment. Why are you doing this? You're Can we just her find him first? Her, she's a waiter's yeah, face. Okay, look, I've done a quick circuit and there's no sign. Hi, Leanne. Look, we should check the red wreck. He might be on the playground now. Right, well, I'm going to go to school and I'm going to find out exactly how this happened. Hey, look, guys. Oh, no. here she comes. And why do you think he's doing Please, this? Please, exactly. Nicole. If, if, if he'd tried to come home, we'd have seen him by now, wouldn't we? Yes. Well, maybe he didn't leave the school then. Well, apparently he did. Well, I don't know. Maybe he's gone back. Look, you go to Bessie Street. I'll check the road. I'm going to have a drive around, see if okay. I can find him, okay. see him. Oi! If anybody snatched him, I'm going to kill you. But there's traffic. There's one of him crossing all those roads. Has anybody called the police? Yes, the school have. They're on the way. No, that's why we need to stay here and wait for them. Look, there are a couple of teachers looking out for him at school and all. Right, you wait for the police. I'm going to head this way. Peter, he'll turn up. Okay. Honestly, in five minutes, this will be over. Right, listen, if anybody finds him, just call all everyone. All right, Leanne. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, Gran, really. OK, bye. Lewis. Why do people do that, you know, get their other halves to ring in sick for them? I always get my mum to do it, to be fair. It's as if they're too ill to talk. So is it just the two of us? Looks that way. Well, that's me. Another day, another dollar. I think I might go into town and have a boot you on. Seen the blouse I've got my eye on. Uh, you don't fancy doing a bit of waitressing, do you? Lewis is just running sick. We've got a table of 13 due in at 12. I'll get you that top you wanted. It's not cheap. <laughs> He's just so considerate, you know, nothing's ever too much trouble for him. Can you guess what colour his cape is, Mrs Osterfield? What? But right, if you ever need outdoing, like your drain unblocking or 
hip replacement. I'm sure we can beam the old searchlight up in the sky. Oh, just ignore him. He's just jealous. It's nice to have a bloke around you, Andy. You know, or else it's just Kirk, do you know what I mean? He should give Kylie his number. Yeah, because that's exactly what she needs. Oh, no, now, now, now. Stop yapping, you two, especially in front of Mrs. Osterfield. Sorry, Mrs. Osterfield. How Sorry, did Lord. Nick take the shocking news that Lewis has got a summer cold? Well, he could have been a bit more sympathetic, to be honest. Mind you, they have got a party of 13 coming in for lunch, so Lewis will be greatly missed. However, will the call? I'm supposed to be working. Well, isn't this more important? How are the kids this morning? Are they good? They're good. They, they wondered where you were. They missed you. I told them you had an early appointment at the dentist. Well, I was going to take them in, but I forgot to put an alarm on. I overslept. Well, they need you. We all do. So did you get them in on time? Near enough. Near enough? <laughs> I didn't sleep. I was going out of my mind. Um, I had to go through their school bags this morning full of letters and checks to write. I know, I'm sorry, I've not been on top of things. I've been so busy. <laughs> with who? But you still managed it in the end. Got them in without incident. Yeah. Yeah, I can get the children ready in the morning. Please don't say it like it's beyond me. I'm surprised, actually. Because usually when you've got them on your own, something goes wrong or gets broken. Have you spoken to Leanne? Asha wasn't using the hairdryer <laughs> as a gun again, was she? <laughs> You see, this is why we need you, because you, like, you know everything. Last time she blew all those birthday cards yeah. over, I nearly broke my perfume. <laughs> Look, if you're saying there's nobody else, then I believe you and I trust you. So please, please come home. Well, yeah, he's small, if anything. I mean, didn't the school describe him to you? Come on. He would have been in his school uniform, although we don't think he'd have his coat on. No, Mr Packham said Mr. he wasn't wearing his coat. Well, if you had a recent photograph that we could look at. Yeah, yeah we have. Uh, he had one taken the other week. and um, his job. We've not had a chance to frame it, but, but he's got his school uniform on. We have officers searching the entire area, I can assure you. We're doing everything we can. I'm not coming back to you, Dad. Wait, why are you doing this? I'm not happy. Yes, yeah, so maybe we haven't tried hard enough. I'm going to come home, pack my things, take the kids with me wherever I go. No, you won't. I will! You are not taking those children away from me again! Now, look, I try my best to be a, a good father and a husband... We're not married. ..a shopkeeper, a friend. So what is it that you want? What is it that I'm not doing? All right, I'm not getting any younger, I'll grant you that. So what do you want? Do you want me to worship you? Is that it? That would yeah, have helped. Lay petals on the ground when you walk into You see, room. this is what I'm talking you about! You're in a sports car, shower you with gifts. Look, I'm a struggling businessman. I'm trying to keep things afloat. I'm not George Clooney. And you know, for the record, if George Clooney ran some backstreet corner shop, maybe he wouldn't seem so attractive. I'd take my chances. <sighs> Was that it? Is that what this is about? Looks? thrills you know because good luck to any man that takes my place i'll give him a month i will give him a year and he will let you down and is he gonna dote on my children like i do no. and is he gonna love you like i do i'm not convinced you love me you say it but it's not the same if you loved me you'd pay me more attention you'd respect my opinions you like having me around i'm convenient that's not the same. That isn't love. Yeah, you're a good father. You do your best. I accept that. But it's not enough. Is there anything else that you can tell us about your falling out this morning? <sighs> Look, no, it weren't really a fallout, you know. It was just business as usual. I mean, have you got kids yourself? Two. Well, then you'll know. It was his first day back at school after a week off. We just had that usual stand-up, that's all. There's no specific reason as to why he wouldn't want to go in. Well, he's a kid. What, what, what kid does want to go in? Well, he hasn't said he's been bullied, for example. There's been a bit of upheaval at home lately, and, I mean, you know, that might have added to his overall... But I, I don't know. It's just not been easy. Simon didn't like me. 
Ah, no, no, that's that's not quite yes, true. Yes, and the wicked Can't... stepmother. His mother's currently being denied access. Tell her the police well, don't I'm need sorry, to know Peter, this. Well, I'm sorry, but it is the police, and, you know, whatever helps. Simon's gone missing, so it's good if they know the facts. All right, you might not be particularly happy. That's the top and bottom of it. Mm. And this isn't the first time that he's gone missing. <sighs> Look, mate, really, wouldn't it be a better use of your time to be out there looking for him instead of standing here quizzing us about our parenting skills? I wasn't aware I was, Mr Barlow. All right, we're not perfect. Fine. But you stick that in your little book. We're just anxious. You know, when he gets home, he's in for it. All right. This has been going on for weeks, this. This behaviour. I mean, where do kids get the nerve, eh? When he's home and safe, we'll talk to him. Well, something's got to give. Well, I think we're about done. But I think it's best if you stay here. There's plenty of people out looking for him. And if he finds his way home, he's likely to be in need of his dad. You reckon? I'm not so sure. This is no good. I want to look for him. Hey, what did he just say? Do you know, I'm serious. This has all got to stop. He lives here, and that's that. And where the flaming hell is he? All right, look, we'll both go. Ten minutes, all right? Stay calm. Stay calm, will you? You got the keys? Yes. I know there's somebody else, and I don't care, all right? I don't care. I won't ask. I will never ask you again. You just please come home. I don't <laughs> love you. It's over. I'm sorry. This is us officially splitting Can you just off? give me one more chance? Have some self-respect. Yeah, but how can I, being with you? You see, this is the problem. You constantly ignore my needs, and then the minute I reach breaking point, you're begging like a dog, and you put me down in the same breath! You should have tried harder. You should have paid more attention. It's too late. I'm gone. Look, I'll call you dad if we hear anything. Si? Simon? Si? Si oh, God. Simon? Simon, can you hear me? How did he get in? Is he awake? Is he breathing? Simon? Peter, look. Si? Oh, no, this is not happening. Tell me this is not happening. Is he breathing? Yeah, he's breathing. He can't have had it all. There's some on the floor. Well, he's had enough to knock himself out. Say, si, how much have you had to drink, son? Who gave him that? Where did he get it? It was in the utility cupboard. I'd hidden it. It was where? Look, shall I call an ambulance? No. There's no time for an ambulance. Just grab my keys. Yes. Come on, son. Yeah. It's OK. And take the bottle. They'll need to know how much he's had. Okay. Open this door. Carla. No, you press it twice. Press it twice. Right, get in. Here, here. Quick. Is everything all right, Ken? No, no. Sam is missing. He ran away from school. Really? I just saw Peter and Carla put him in the car and drive off. They found him. Well, they must have done. Uh, oh, well, they'll be taking you back to school. Hardly seems worthwhile. Uh, I'm not so sure. When Peter was carrying him, Simon looked asleep. Asleep? But I just spoke to Peter about five minutes ago. Yeah, something's not right. So, by the time they chased him across the playground, he'd jumped over the gate and he was gone. Oh, that school's got a lot to answer for. I bet he's in someone's back garden, terrified. <sighs> or maybe he's got a bus or a train. Have you seen him? Nick says they found him. I'm trying to get through to Peter Where now. Was he? I saw Peter carrying him out of the flat. It's probably fine, but he looked asleep or unconscious. What? Peter! Peter, where are you? Is he all right? Why? What happened? Peter? Peter? They're on the way to hospital. What's wrong? He didn't say. Or wouldn't. Oh, nice one, Jace. I'll pop the money over to you tonight. Um, did you manage to do a set for Kirk and all? Oh, damn. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. 
All right, mate. Cheers. Bye. Right, where was that? You were banging on about Marcus again. Mm. She's smitten this one. Uh, excuse me, I am allowed to have male friends, you know. Have you seen when Harry met Sala? Yeah, I have, but Harry wasn't gay. If he was gay, they'd have been all right, wouldn't they? Oh, Grant, uh, I nipped into the bistro earlier, saw Mum in there, waitressing, and doing her best telephone box. <laughs> oh, leave her alone. She were calling Nick Nicholas. Oh, oh well, <laughs> she'll be trying her best. And they are a maitre d' down, remember? Yeah, well, I think she's a bit too old to reinvent herself, don't you? Oh, d that is the trouble with this country, David. You reach 50 and you're thrown on the scrap heap. There's still quite a few of us going strong, you know. It says the one with the dodgy heart. Yeah, enough of that. I'm as fit as a flea. Now, uh, what were we talking about before we got on to your mother? Marcus. Oh. No. This is how much is actually left, but we don't know But there was a fair bit on the um, floor that had spilled and on the sofa. sofa. And we, we, we tried to ask him, but he's just not responded at all. Yeah, and he's never tried to drink alcohol before? No, no. He, uh, he was in the flat on his own, you see. And I know that sounds mad, but... He ran away from school and he'd found his own way home, but anyway, that's that's another story. Oh, if we knew he was capable of something I mean, like we this. don't normally have drink in the house, do we? we got, because I don't drink, you see. He's going to be all right, isn't he? You know, you're going to have to pump his stomach. Well, we may well put him on a drip once we have a better idea of how much he's actually had. Well, he's had enough to knock himself out. Mm. Children, obviously, aren't used to having alcohol in their bloodstream. No, we appreciate that, but, I mean, these accidents happen, don't they? I mean, you must see it all the time, right? It's concerning when we do. I know, but he's going to be all right, isn't he? Surely. Right, two red wines, two white wines and two rosés. I wouldn't ask them to make it straightforward. <sighs> One mojito, hold the mint, a rusty nail, a scarlet O'Hara and a woo-woo, a gin and slim lime, a soda and lime and a lager and lime. How many red wines was that? <laughs> you do the cocktails, I'll do the rest. What did my mum say to that couple? Did you manage to smooth it over? Uh, yeah, they couldn't decide between the chicken or the duck. What'd she say? She told them that the chicken was good, but the duck was quacking. And then she assured them that the duck was actually dead. OK, uh, I'm going to get it back here before she ruins this. Can you manage her tables? Yeah, of course. Table six, want another bottle of shabby. OK, Mum, I'm promoting you to barmaid. Really? Yeah, I need a gin and slim lime, lime and soda and a lager and lime. Red lorry, yellow lorry, come <laughs> on. Oh, and I don't think table 12 liked the sea bus. Well, table 12? What did you say to him? Well, nothing. I think he was just trying it on, cos I spilt a bit of wine on his trouser. A bit? It was only a thimble full. We started going on about dry cleaning bills, but I nipped that in the book. I saw it. Um, I think my grandson was brought in a short while ago, Simon Barlow. Yeah, he was brought in by his dad. Is he all right? One moment, please. He came as soon as we heard. What was the name again, love? Simon Barlow. Do you mind if I stay another night? No, no, of course not. I know you've got a lot of things on your mind. Oh, there's not much I can do. He's convinced there's someone else. Hmm? Dev. But there isn't. I wish there was. Someone in particular? Maybe. Who? Nobody you know. Oh, poor Dev. It's not his fault. You did a good job of blaming him. Well, you reach a certain age, I suppose. Why, if you're dissatisfied looking down the barrel of another 30 years together, why stay? Yeah, what can I get you? Just down this way for you. Right, thanks. There we go. Where is he? What happened? Look, it's fine, OK? We found him in the flat. And? He got his hands on a bottle of wine. You know, a bottle with the, the screw top. Oh, Peter. No, no, it's, it's not our fault. And anyway, look, he's going to be fine. I'm sorry, it's not your fault. No. Look, he's on oxygen right now, but... Well, they might have to keep him in overnight. Yeah, but it's OK. It's purely a precaution, OK? They just want to monitor him every hour. Has anybody hour. found social services? Oh, oh, Leanne, come on. Well, I'm sorry. Is that not the procedure here? An eight-year-old boy next a bottle of wine and ends up in hospital? That's not really my main concern right now. No, I bet it's Look, not. Look, ordinarily, he would never be left alone. It's because we were out looking for him. In fact, we were all out looking for him. Yeah, and the police told you to stay put, didn't they? Because I spoke to him. He was frantic with worry. Right, so where was this wine then, eh? Was it just lying around in the kitchen, sat on the counter? Yeah, but there's none of us thought for a minute. Come on, where was it? Look, let me just tell him... Let me just tell him they're going to find out anyway. Find out what? We... Well, we decided not to have any alcohol in the house, but... But what? Come on, spit it out. But I bought a bottle of wine. OK, I, I heard them coming up the stairs and I hid it in the utility cupboard. Make it pardon. Where we keep the mop and bucket? 
Um, I'm really, really sorry. Now, you've got to think about this carefully, son, OK? Because this is a very big decision. Do you want your red pyjamas or the ones with the gorilla on? Are they both clean? Well, they only wore the ones with the gorilla on for one night, so, yeah, they should be fine. I'll go back and get them. Uh, I'll bring both pairs so you can choose. Now, let's have a thing. What else shall we bring in? Uh, what about a book? Mm -hmm. I just happened to have bought you a lovely book about the weather. Maybe I could read it to you. Do you like that? It's all about hurricanes and tornadoes and marvellous pictures. Oh, and there's a whole section on the water cycle, just like you're learning at school. Uh, oh, sorry. Dropped off. No, I think that sounds like a Bobby Dazzler idea. Yeah. I'll go now, yeah. Yeah, why don't you? And did you know, lightning can be up to three miles long and only an inch or so wide. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Oh. We made it, just about. Thanks, Mum. Yeah, nice one, Gail. No, oh, it's a pleasure. Love it when we're busy. Gives me a buzz. Look, sorry I had to nip off earlier. It couldn't be out. That's OK. I best phone Mum, I'm actually, see if there's any news. Thanks for taking charge. Sorry, that's what I do. They should put a tag on that lad. I know, Leanne must have been going out of her head. She was. Hiya, any news? Is he all right? He did what? Did you hear about Simon? Uh, yeah. Yes, telephoned. Could have been worse. Could, could be methylated spirits or bleach. Or... Is it any wonder with a father like that? Well, it was an accident. I mean, no one would mean for that to happen. So what else did Stella say? Did she tell you about Dev? Yeah. Yeah, she said uh, that he came in to see you and that. He was a bit upset. I've left him. For good. No going back. You sure about that? Totally sure. Well, yeah, so long as you know that... As long as I know what? But as long as you know that he didn't do it for me. Cos I really think we're gonna have to call this off. Why? <laughs> it's supposed to be fun. And it still can be fun. It'd just get easier, if anything. I won't have to sneak around. <clears throat> Street cars? Oh, yeah. Hello, Mrs. Bishop. Where to? <laughs> be there in the blink of an eye. Yep. So all of this was for nothing? What I put Dev and the kids through, everything was for nothing? I didn't ask you to leave him. I mean, that wasn't on the cards. You're unhappy with Dev and you've done something about it. I'm not the answer. I'm not the reason. So you don't want to be with me? I want to be with Stella. And the back chat. You've never heard anything like it, trust me. See your kids today. Unbelievable. Yeah. Are you serious? The grief that you've given your mother and your grandmother, you still do. Yeah, well, not when I work. What's her name? Fair's age. She was good as gold, huh? David, you were the devil child. You were like <laughs> Damien Omen. Shut up, Maria. Go on, what was she saying? <laughs> right, so she woke up at 10 this morning, yeah? She comes into the kitchen, sits down and says, where's my breakfast? What did you say? Well, I told her to get it herself, didn't I? Trying to instill some discipline. <laughs> but what did she say? She called me all the names under the sun, told me to get out of her face and stormed off back to bed. <laughs> Honestly, when Mum came in this afternoon, I have never been so relieved to see it in all of my life. I was punching the air. <laughs> you see, we've got it easy. I mean, our Max is impeccable. He just comes in. He eats his dinner, he does all his homework, he says his please and thank yous. Mm, check you out, the poor parent. Yeah. <laughs> well, I am. Or oh, I wonder how my little Liam's getting on at his teddy bear's picnic. Teddy bear's picnic? <sighs> Nightmare. Oh, no, it's dead sweet. Got a new teddy bear for it and everything. Yeah, well, that's not strictly true, is it, Maria? Don't you get bored? What, looking after kids? Mm. Yeah, of course I do, all the time, but it's all worth it in the end. Yeah. Saying that, it was all right when we were sat around watching telly. I think we were taking the mick out of people's hair. 
<laughs> Dodgy ground there, Windass. Shut it, Platt. Oh, it'll happen to you one day, Garrett. It'll hit you like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Just a bit off the sides, please, Maria. <laughs> Ken, um, Dad and look, dude, you couldn't find the weather, but she didn't know where you put it. Well, in a bag at the side of the sofa. I thought I told her that. Right, well, she's going to try and get in later, just depending on whether she can get a bus on. She's got Amy this evening. That's all right, it's not bad. Isn't there? No. Well, I think there's major panic. Because we both know why he did it, don't we, Peter? He's copying you. He's seen you two take refuge in the bottle. It's what do they call it? Oh, yeah. Learnt behaviour. Well, yeah, it was an accident. You stay out of it. Your contribution ended when you stashed that poison in the flaming cupboard. All right. This is not our finest moment, Leanne, OK? I agree. Is that what you want me to say? All right. So what was then, Peter, eh? The night you fell asleep with a fag on and nearly burnt him to death, because we've been here before, haven't we, eh? And now I'm thinking, what's going to happen a third time? It's not going to be a third time. Yeah. I remember similar promises. When are you going to realise that he's better off in my care and the sooner that happens, the safer he's going to be? It is not my fault. Yes, he it is your fault. Everything is your fault because everything is about you and your terms. I want a drink, so to hell with it. Oh, I'll have a fag. Oh, now I'll have a sleep. I'll have this Leah, woman. No, I won't. I'll have work. this one. It doesn't Actually, work like that. Both. I'll have everybody till I can decide who I want. Everything is about you and your every whim. That's not true. He deserves better than this, Peter. He deserves a better life. What do you want? I came to see how he is. The police have put us in the picture. What kind of setup are you running? What did you say to him, eh, Packham? What did you say to him to make him run away? Peter, this is not the place. As I've explained to Mrs. Explain pa it to me. Oi! This isn't Mr. Packham's fault. No? Well, don't put him in charge of a zoo, that's all I can say. Uh, with respect, a school and a zoo are two very different things. They're both supposed to be kept locked. Primarily, Mr Barlow, we want our children to feel comfortable and safe. He didn't, did he? He oh, didn't feel comfortable. Why was that? We must ask ourselves, certainly, why is that? Maybe we've all got some thinking to do. Get out, Peter. Get out! This isn't over. No. Don't believe it is. This is, uh, for sure there's, there's, there. Where's Will now? She's still at the dentist. Nope. Did she get a sticker? No, honey. We're right, grown ups, so we don't get stickers. Where is she then? Ah, uh, she's at work. Will she say goodnight to us? Uh, yeah, it depends. On what? Honey, I don't know. All right, she might not get a break. All right, so, come on. Let's take your teas, get it upstairs, go. Skip the bath, it's late. Come on, please. Have you been crying? Oh, come on, don't be so stupid. Of course I haven't been crying. Looks like you've been crying. <sighs> Daddy's been, been crying. crying. Daddy's been, been crying. Shush, shush, guys, come on. I have not been crying, all right? Grown-ups, we don't cry. Mum cries all the time. Does she? Does she? Here you go. Some more? Why'd you do it, Si? Oi, mister. What a daft old thing to do, eh? I'm sorry. You're not in any trouble, you know that, don't you? But we don't run away from school and we don't drink out of anything if we don't know what's in it, do we? Hey, Si, I've got your Transformers. You still like them? Yeah. Hey, it'll be exciting, won't it? Spending the night in here. I don't want to spend a night here. What are you going to have to do, mate? Right, you see, this is what happens if you're not very careful. I just want to keep an eye on you, though. You know that you're nice and healthy, really. Then tomorrow morning, you come home with me. Day off school. How does that sound, eh? Yeah. Yeah, nice, normal day. I want us to be together like it used to be. Yeah. I know you do, love. Why can't you be married again? Because that's not possible, Simon. Because your dad wants to live with Carla now. Yeah, but... It's yeah, isn't that the top and bottom of it, Peter? Yeah, I don't think this is the right time to talk about this, really. Well, I don't see there's any reason why you shouldn't understand who's to blame for all this, do you? You see, Sai, si, this is why we can't be a family anymore, because of this. Oh, because of me. Amazing. That is amazing, that. Do you know what, Simon? I would love you to come and live with me. You could see your dad any time you wanted, but I would look after you properly. Do you know what, Liam? You can be hard-faced sometimes, do you know that? Yeah? Yeah. 
Well, at least his whereabouts and his safety will be top of my priorities. It's the top of my priorities. Uh, I'm not listening to this. No, of course you're not listening to it, because you don't get your own way, so you spit your dummy out. And what's it got to do with you anymore, eh? Nothing. What right have you got, Leanne? I'll tell you, you've got none. To care? What right have I got to care? I wish you'd stayed away. You're not even his real mother. His real mother is dead. And then Lewis phoned in sick. He's got a summer cold and we had to recruit Gail. Oh, how did that go? Oh, not brilliantly, but we managed. She's safely back in a box now. Oh. And how about the party of 13? Eating out the palm in the hand. Oh, run out of place, did you? I could see Nick watching me. You know when you can just sense it? Yeah, well, sometimes it's hard to tell. I think he wants me back. And he kept giving me these little smiles. He's too proud to say he needs me, but he does. Yes, love. What are you doing? Is he going to be all right? Yeah, for now. Doesn't bode well, though, does it? Like father, like son. Cry for help. Sometimes a cry for help is a cry for help. Very profound. Well, it's true. He's with the wrong person in the wrong care, and it's scary. God. Kids survive all sorts. Look at Max. Yeah. And look at the life he's had so far. Hey, he's a bright little thing. Yeah, he is now. He's settled. He got through all that, and Simon will get through this. Oh, so you think he's fine where he is? I didn't say that. I'm sure you're the best mum in the world. And that's just flattery. No. It's an educated guess. Don't let Gailey you say that. <laughs> First thing in the morning. Sweet dreams, son. I love you. Yes, can we help you? I don't think so. Right, who am I giving a lift to, then? Uh, I'll just go and say one last goodbye, Ken. Okay. Why is he here? Come on, Peter, can we at least try and be civil? I bet this brings back some memories, doesn't it? Of what? Well, same place, same people. I came to see Leanne. Why? Does it matter? Because I care. Come on, let's go. Let's go. You keep him away from my son, do you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Goodbye, you. Carl! I don't want this to end. Come here. This wasn't the deal leaving partners hurting people. I'm just scared. I never signed up for any chaos. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm in love with someone else. How can you be? I picked you up when you were down. When she was tearing strips off you. I tried to see it from your side. I hid money for you. I risked everything. Yeah, and you got what you wanted. I won't let you abandon me. You're not mine to abandon. We belong together. We're already halfway there. Just go and put her out of her misery. I can't change the rules. It was a fling. It wasn't stick or twist. I'll tell her. For what purpose? To spite me? Do you really want to look after her when she's old? Is hers the face you want to see when you're both in your 70s? Going on holiday together? Spending every waking minute together? Yes, yes, and yes again. Then why did you do this? For all the worst possible reasons. I don't want to be with you, Sunita. I'm sorry. Go and tell Stella if you have to. But I will never look at you again. And this is the last I want to hear of this. Well, Peter, maybe I should go. Where? I don't know, Michelle's. Why? Well, isn't this all my fault? It was a pretty stupid place to hide it. No, not just the, the wine. <sighs> Everything's. Peter, you were happy. Leanne was happy. Simon was happy. And in I come, depending on you, tempting your way. It was mutual. Yeah, well, I still feel responsible. <sighs> 
Well, aren't you going to reassure me? I've just reassured you. And if you want the God's honest truth, I could do without this self-pity right at this minute. Well, that's me told, isn't it? If you want to go, go, if that's what you're getting at. No, it wasn't what I was getting at. I'll call you tomorrow, I'll let you know how Simon is. <sighs> yeah, well, please do. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Peter's anguish with son Simon has only just begun, but how much worse can it get? Find out from actor Chris Gascoigne as he talks about the trouble still to come at itv.com slash Corrie. And our next visit to Weatherfield is on Wednesday night at 7.30. Next, the sun is shining brightly. I'm very jealous. Benny Dorm is after the break.